Welcome back YouTube, to my WWE vlog, I am Daniel Parkin and today's video will mainly be a thoughts video after after I watched today's Smackdown. Uh, a couple of thoughts, uh, a couple of things I had uh, I wanted to talk about after this Smackdown, not not necessarily a review, just a couple of things happened on Smackdown that I, I, re I really want to get out there uh, in, in a video, that's all. So let's go. Okay, first thing I want to talk about is this uh, Cody Rhodes and Rey Mysterio segment they had on SmackDown. Now, in case you didn't see it, what happened is Rey Mysterio just finished beating Kane in a match, and then Dusty Rhodes came out and fought and told Cody Rhodes to apologise to Rey Mysterio. And basically, Cody Rhodes apologised to Rey Mysterio, but then Dusty and Dusty allowed um, Cody to attack Rey Mysterio. So that fills you in on that. So basically, it's a turn, it's a turn, a uh, heel turn for Dusty Rhodes. It was a good segment, I'll give it that. But the the thing I want to talk about is how good this segment was in fueling the rivalry between Cody Rhodes and Rey Mysterio. Now this this attack um, had a lot of good things in it. Firstly, you had Dusty Rhodes there, which is really going to help uh, this rivalry uh, be a little bit more intense. With you know Cody Rhodes' dad being there and getting involved in it. And number you know and also you had the Dusty Rhodes heel turn, like I said, which was a nice little addition. Cody Rhodes attacking Rey Mysterio, smashing his face into his mirror thing that he has on his entrance, on the stupid dashing Cody Rhodes entrance. Um, and then you add him taking Rey's mask off. You know, uh, I think WWE here have done a great job, um, a great job in fueling this rivalry. Um, and you know, and and the, and the great thing is, is there, there's a premise for this rivalry now. We all know what's recently happened. I'm I'm hoping they, you know, get rid of this dashing Cody Rhodes thing. But as for now, you know, I'm saying this this Ray Cody uh, feud is is going to be a good one going into WrestleMania. Uh, and and part of me feels that WWE are going to use this this feud to try and put Cody Rhodes over a little bit more because he's not really been used in the right way. And I really do hope they get rid of this dashing Cody Rhodes thing. So that is the first thing I wanted to talk about. The second thing I want to talk about is a bit bit more of a rant than the first one. But the second thing I want to talk about is the main the the main event of SmackDown, if you'd call it, um, which was the tag team match which would uh, which would decide the outcome of Vicky Guerrero's career status in WWE. Um, we had basically had Edge and Kelly Kelly uh, versus Vicky Guerrero and Drew McIntyre. Uh, why Drew McIntyre was put in there, maybe for the sto Kelly Kelly storyline purpose, but. That's the only thing I can think of. And of course, with these matches, with Vicky's job on the line, we kind of knew Vicky was going to lose and get fired. Now, my main... You know, the, the match itself was okay, and I don't have a problem with the, you know, the, the storyline itself, but, you know, we've seen this way too often now from WWE. I mean, let's just go back these last couple of months. We've had John Cena getting fired, and then coming back the next night, overcoming Nexus... And getting his job back, and then winning, you know, doing his big Superman thing that he does. You know, we've also had uh, Kelly Kelly getting fired in recently, which, um, you know, we she came back a couple of weeks later. Um, you know, blah blah blah. We then had Edge get fired for like a night. N you know, now we got Dolph Ziggler. Then we got Dolph Ziggler fired. You know, and now we got Vicky Guerrero fired. And with these increasing firings, it's just. You know, I know they're trying to they're trying to add a little bit of spice to the storyline, but with these firings, is is they just the, the thing is now is they've got so un, they've got so un, unbelievable and you know you can't believe the, that they're actually getting fired anymore. That it's just doing no good for the storyline. I mean, when John Cena got fired, I think everyone knew everyone knew he was going to come back. They knew they wouldn't fire John Cena really. You know, and with people like Vicky Guerrero and Dolph Ziggler, I think you just you just know they're going to come back. I mean, with someone like Dolph, Dolph, Dolph Ziggler, they're not going to just fire them. And, you know, it's just, although it's trying to fuel the rivalries and stuff like that, it's happening way too often now, and it's just getting to the point where you just cannot believe it anymore. And, you know, it's just, I don't know why they add it. Could they, could they not do something else? You know, could they not do something new, you know, something new or something, you know, that could sort of be more continuous rather than just fire someone to, and you know get them off TV and try and sell it after, sell it for a couple of weeks and then have them come back again you know to the, everyone's surprise even though no one is surprised by it anymore so you know uh, John Cena was a really annoying one for me Kelly Kelly again was just a little bit annoying because you, you just you know you, you just know you never first of all you never expected her to get fired and secondly it just you know, it just didn't work. And Dolph Ziggler, we all know he's going to come back at some point. Edge, well, why would they fight their world champion? You just know it's not going to happen. Um, you know, 
know, Vicky Guerrero is going to come back at some point. You, you, I don't think she, she's... You know she's not going to get fired. And all these are evolved around silly storylines, which WWE could have done without. I mean, you know, the, the Teddy Long attack story, you know, I personally thought this could be a really good storyline. You know, who attacked Teddy? And it could have gone on for a long time. But, you know, it just... They cut it short, because um, I think it was getting pretty obvious who attacked him. Um, and all these firings, this, this Kelly Kelly... Vicky, Dolph, Edge, have all been a result of this one storyline that WWE could have done without. Um, you know, and that and that is just my thoughts on the firings. I really wish they'd just stop it with these firings now because they're getting so unbelievable. It's just ridiculous, and they're just they're just, just happening so often now. Um, so yeah, that's that's just my thoughts on you know getting rid of the firings and stuff. And also on this SmackDown, I was surprised to see that there was no Undertaker. Now I know Undertaker's just come back from Big Return on Raw, you know, with, and his rivalry with Triple H is trying to develop on Raw, but when you're SmackDown's main, one of SmackDown's main guys, you know, who's going to draw in ratings, I, I'd like WWE to at least make him show up now. I saw, I saw, I heard something that he appeared after the, you know, in the dark match after the TV um, tapings, but I, you know, I just think if WWE are going to, you know, draw from SmackDown, they should put someone like Undertaker out there, especially, especially after he's just made a big return. Uh, you know, that's just that's just my opinions on that. I'd like to see... I mean, one thing I was expecting on SmackDown today was Undertaker... Um, you know, was Undertaker to, to actually make an appearance on SmackDown. Maybe do a bit of a promo, but I didn't get that today. What I got instead was a load of raw footage, which I'd already seen. Now, we saw two pieces of raw footage. We saw... I think we saw two pieces. It was... I know we saw John Cena's whole rap response thing... And then we saw the two 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 twenty one eleven promo, which I had Undertaker in it, you know, for granted. But you know, I I was expecting to see Undertaker, and I got two pieces of raw footage. One of them, which is about ten minutes long, which was them showing John Cena's response to the Rock. You know, I can understand why they might put that in, but I'd rather see their big flagship guy return rather than pieces of raw footage, which I've already seen. Sorry about the lag there, by the way. Um, so you know, just just. Why can't Smackdown make, why can't we make Smackdown like you know a separate show in a way rather than just introducing all this raw stuff and then bring in Smackdown then, then bring in Smackdown superstars to raw to try and make raw better why can't they just concentrate on Smackdown as an as a second flagship show to raw you know bring on you know, so bring Undertaker back on Smackdown even though he's rivaling with Triple H maybe bring Triple H on to Smackdown as well you know that could easily do something for the feud um and you know, stop playing footage of Raw, which you've already seen. You know, everyone's seen it already. You don't need to replay it. Enough of that rather abrupt ending from me, unfortunately. Um, that is pretty much it. From that's pretty much all I have to say on this video. Um, make sure you uh, make sure you put your comments in the comment section below on what I've said uh, on the couple of, on the topics I've talked about today. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. My Twitter is Daniel underscore Parkin. My Tumblr account where I update Raw reviews and WWE blogs in general is Daniel Parkin. Uh, like I said, don't forget to comment, uh, thumbs up the video if you will, and also there's a little button up there uh, called subscribe. If you like the videos, please don't hesitate to subscribe or add me as a friend onto YouTube. And also, on, if you want to ask us questions or anything, go on our YouTube channel page or put them in the comment section below, of course. Uh, that has been it from me today. I hope you found, I hope that you found this video good. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for me, and goodbye.